Hey guys, welcome to this tutorial. My name is Dr. Anthony Cliff. And in this short tutorial, I'm going to tell you about how to get your your tables, such as this, with your your correct heading, and insert that into the text so that when you do change them, it's all going to be included, it's all going to update for you. Similarly, I'm going to show you how to set your figures up so that they're correct. Again, making sure that they uh, every time you update, if you put a new figure in the head of this one, it's going to update. So when you come down to do your contents page and you're inserting your figures, well, it's going to save you a hell of a lot of time because you've already set it up, you've planned ahead, and Word is going to insert all of this for you. Nice and easy, nice and simple. So hopefully you followed uh, my previous tutorial, which is all about how to set up our chapter numbers. Um, really important that you go ahead and do that and you set your chapter number because that's really important for our numbering for our figures. So go ahead watch that, there should be a link that's popped up now, go and follow that. So you've done your work, you've included that, you've added all your information in there, you've followed the steps so far I've put in my tutorials and now you're coming down to putting your figures in and making sure that they're correct for each kind of section that you've got separately before you then put it into something like this, your main thesis. Okay, so the best thing I'm going to show you is if you have a figure. So you've got a figure, you've put it in, I'm currently on chapter 4, just as an example I pulled out from my thesis. So it's something that you want to talk about, it's um, a figure or picture, whatever it is, it might be a graph, that you want to talk about in your thesis. Now, of course, you could say here, as seen in figure, whatever number it is, and then put your figure title underneath manually. That's fine, but if forever I put another um, figure ahead of that, I'm going to have to go back through and manually change those numbers to make sure it's correct and it's in chronological order. And it also means I have to do it by manually, by hand, if I did my contents page. Again, hell of a lot of work, there's no need to. So, you've inserted your figure into your work, it's dead simple. All you do, click on it so it's highlighted, make your way to References at the top, and then you want to click Insert Caption. So, you've got figure here, you've got a choice, you've got equation, fig, figure, so whatever it is. I personally much prefer fig dot rather than figure. You want to make sure that it's below selected item. You want to click numbering and make sure that you click include chapter number. Then you've got a choice here of how you separate them, a hyphen, period, or colon. I much prefer a colon. Now again, this only really works if you have set up your templates to accommodate for chapter numbers. If you have, uh, great, click OK, and then simply click OK. That'll pop up here, and you simply give it a title, Dent Point Cloud. Make sure that it's aligned to the left. So now, if you move this anywhere, if you move this down below another one, this number's going to update. If you move it up that way, it's also going to update. Some of the numbers there, how you set this out, really important, is, as I mentioned in that tutorial, the first number here, so this number is 6, this is denoting that this is chapter 6. Chapter 6, and this is the 12th figure in my chapter. So that's why we link them to. Now, as any good academic will do, you never ever just put a figure into your work without explaining or at least highlighting it to the reader. So, for example, if I look at my sentence above here, I want to tell the reader, as seen in figure 6.12, a dense point cloud can offer a high level of detail. Overall, this step took 26 hours to be completed for this VLM. So, I could type figure 6.12 in there myself, but like I mentioned before, if I move this and that changes, well, it's going to cause you some hassle later on. So, all you do is go to References, Cross Reference, then here you want to find where your figures are. So, fig dot. You don't want to include the entire caption, you just want the label and the number. 
and then scroll down so it was 6.12 which was this one click on that click insert it's now being inserted as you can see so as seen in fig 6.2 and then we go, that's linked now. They're all linked. So if I move this, say if I'm editing and I feel like actually this needs to be my first one, I can move that up there. Simply right click, update field, and it will update all of them to make sure that they're all correct. Now that's the same for your content page as well. So I'll show you how to do that for a table now. Okay, so let's say you had a table. So I'll just delete this and show you how I've done that. So you've got your table. Really should to show some data. Here's just some theme generation um, table data. Similar to what we've done with our figure, we simply, once we've inserted our table, click there so it's all highlighted. References, then you want to click insert caption. It's not a figure, it's now a table, so click table. You always want your table headings to be above, so remember your figures go below, your tables go above, so click select above item. Then click numbering, make sure your chapter is ticked, click OK, and I'm going to change that actually this time to uh, a period in between them. Click OK, click OK. That's going to pop up there, and I'm just going to give it a name, so theme map example. And as we mentioned before, you always highlight this to the reader as you go. So an example of part of a theme map generated from the questionnaire of open-ended questions can be seen in, and it's going to be table 2.8. So as seen in, we go to cross-reference, we find table, we just click only label and number, a 2.8 theme map example, insert, close, add our space, and there we have it. So that's all going to update if we add anything above this or below it. It's all going to add in into line. Obviously, it's the first time that you do this. It'll obviously, this will be number one rather than the eighth one in the sequence. So this is chapter two, and this is the eighth one. If it's chapter one, and it's the first one, it's going to be 1.1. But the system will sort that out for you. And again, if you do move them, just move it to the new one. Right-click it, update field, and it'll update both that and that. And also your content page, if you've already made your content page. So, how do we do that? Simply, if you click Insert Table of Figures, and then that is going to pull all of that across and add, for example here, our figure one. Click OK, that's going to insert your table of figures. If you click this one, that's going to insert your table uh, for your tables, your contents for your tables. You click OK, obviously you would move your cursor way up to the very start and to do this, but that's going to pull across all your page numbers, all the text numbers, and all the table numbers, or figure numbers. And you've got a choice here of what kind of dots you use. I tend to just leave that as is. Insert it, highlight it all, and then change it to the font that you're currently using. So by default, this will pull it across as um, Calibri, but if you're using Garamond or Times New Roman, for example, then you need to highlight them, highlight that contents page, and just change the figures, uh, correction, change the text to the same size and the same font as what your rest of your work is. And it really is as simple as that, and you'll end up something that looks like this. You'll have all of your figures here with your page numbers, and you know, a really useful reason for that is, is I can click on figure 6.1, and that's going to take me directly to figure 6.1 that's in my thesis. Same with your tables as well. Really useful way. It's an extremely useful way with the headings. Uh, if you've already set it out to make your life a hell of a lot easier when you come around to doing your content pages and making sure that when you are shifting things around, because you probably will do, um, that you're not having to go back through each one and double checking and changing it all. It's all going to do it for you. Make your life a lot easier. So check out some of the other tutorials um, and thank you for joining along.